Well, it's my pleasure to have old friend of Protoss Expert, Lev Perry. How are you doing, Lev? I'm doing good, Russ. How are you, sir? Great. Thanks for jumping on Skype for this uh, this little conference call that we're going to share with the community. Uh, we're going to talk in a moment about some new stuff, about 701. What I'd like to do first before we get there is clear up a little bit of confusion that I think we had as well about what the new software offered to Pro Tools users. Let's hear it from the horse's mouth, from the man who knows what he's talking about. So what does 701, there's a great feature for Pro Tools users, isn't there in there now, the Pro Tools mode, let's call it. That's right. So we call it PT mode. It's um, it's a small little feature inside of our uh, our settings app. You just click it on. And what it really does is it makes all of the analog and digital I.O. line up for hardware inserts. So if you're inside of Pro Tools uh, and you go to the I.O. setup, you, uh, you'll notice that there's uh, an extra little input in there in the very front that sort of pushes all of the analog and digital I.O. into alignment. And um, why that's important, again, is if people want to use hardware inserts with their Apollo or their Apollo 16, uh, they'll be able to, uh, to use all of it instead of losing the first two like you used to. Uh, before the future happens. So that shipped in version 7.0. Uh, and yeah, people have been using it for a few months now and been really happy that they can finally do, you know, eight uh, hardware inserts with an Apollo, for example. But you haven't been resting on your laurels. So you've got some more news for us now, haven't you? 7.01? We definitely do. So 7.1 uh, is shipping today. Uh, it's a very big release. It's even bigger than 7.0 in many ways. Um, it's got both new plugin features and also some features for Apollo customers. Uh, on the plugin side, we've got the new Pultec Passity Q collection, and it actually features three classically modeled Pultecs. And uh, much like we've been doing with you know our 1176s, our LA2As, uh, we've now done with the Pultec, but we've gone back in from scratch and modeled it using you know our latest technology, our, our latest techniques uh, for circuit modeling. And so what we end up with is an amazing EQP1A, an amazing MEQ5. Uh, and then we've also gone and done something that we didn't have before, which is the HLF3C, um, which is the, the cut filters uh, from the classic Pultec series. So um, that is a, a bundle that you know customers can get for $299. If you already own the Pultec Pro, um, it's uh, $149. It's half price. So that is uh, an amazing new bundle. We've got some of the you know top artists. Uh, here in the states talking about you know how amazing it is how great it sounds and you know customers are excited for, for this because it's going to be something where you would only ever have like two or three Pultex max in a, in a high-end studio and now you can have as many uh, as you can fit on a chip which is really cool um, the other plug-in announcement is uh, from our friends at Millennia and um, Millennia and Brainworks teamed up to bring uh, the NSEQ2 to the UAD platform exclusively and this is you know an amazing uh, mastering EQ. It's also good for, you know, for channel. It's a really sweet sounding EQ. Um, and it's got Millennia's twin topology modeled in software. So you really do get the best of, you know, tube and solid state in one product. But again, the ability to use this, you know, for tracking, for mastering, uh, it, it just sounds incredible and really stoked uh, that that's coming to the platform today. The last thing is, you know, really for Apollo users, we've uh, been shipping Apollo for a little over a year now, and people uh, have been asking for you know, the ability to do more flexible routing. Now, in 7.0, we actually uh, slipped one of the flexible routing features in there, um, which was a thing we called virtual I.O. And virtual I.O. allows customers to take uh, channels out of their DAW and route them right into our console application. And it's big for, you know, virtual instruments, for example, because sure. you can take a virtual instrument, route it into a, a channel in the console, and then play it through our low latency plugins. And so this is a really big deal for, you know, those customers, but you know, once it's in the console, customers want to do more with it. And so um, we're actually adding this feature called Flex Routing that allows a customer to take any input and route it to any of the analog or digital outputs on their Apollo. Um, on Apollo 16, you can go analog in to any analog out or go to the AICBU outs. So a lot of flexibility. Um, I'll be happy to show it to you guys if you guys want to do a yeah, little Yeah, let's, let's, let's have an on screen. So basically, you've almost created a kind of internal patch based system now, yeah? Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. We've, we've done that as well as doing a couple of really interesting um, other feature enhancements that customers have been asking for. Yeah. So, so I don't know if you can see my screen right now. We have your screen. Fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. So just a quick recap. Um, you know, here's a quick look at our 
our new pull text. There's uh, you know, the three individual plugins. Nice. And, and you know, beautiful GUIs, but more importantly, great sound. Really captures you know all of the the nuances, the tube amplifiers, the distortion, and also kind of the just the amazing ability to just boost forever and have it still sound good, which is really the the cornerstone of what a pull tech can do for tracks and for for program material. Can I suggest you've got nine days until you have to buy them? Yeah, I should definitely buy them. <laughs> I, I, I definitely plan to. You know, um, we're uh, we're obviously shipping today, but I actually use this stuff when I'm testing, like our customers do, just to you know see what it's like. You know, they demo something, mm -hmm. make sure that all the authorization stuff works. So that's why it's like that. Um, this but here is, is nice. the, yeah. here's the new Millennia, uh, the new Millennia NSEQ2, just an amazing mastering uh, equalizer, but again, uh, can also be used on individual tracks, which is something that I've been doing with it. And uh, it's really cool. It's a com completely different flavor of EQ compared to the Pultex, but just an amazing sounding uh, EQ as well. And, uh, let's get to a couple of features that I was talking about. Um, right now, we're looking at uh, Apollo's console application. You know, the, the new feed is sort of, uh, I don't know, it's understood, but it's right up here uh, on the track. It's the new output menu. Uh, you know, we had a, a very simple design goal in mind when we started uh, designing Flex routing to make sure that every feature that we gave the customer in version 7 uh, was unaffected by having this flexibility. And so, still have, you know, the ability to have all of your sends active. Like, you know, your aux mixes and all that stuff is um, available. So the way that flex routing works is pretty straightforward. Basically, you could take uh, your any input, let's say it's input five and six, and you can route it out to any output. Let's say I just had it done here. I, I route this to seven and eight. And let's say that I've also got um, some audio happening here, and I just have something plugged in. Um, what I've done with my Apollo is I took output seven and eight, and I hooked it right back into input seven and eight. And so you're actually seeing the flexible routing happening. So yeah. take take the audio in, going out to the outside world, and in this case, you know, coming right back into Apollo. But you could take line seven and eight and hook it up to an amplifier, hook it up to an external effects processor, hook it up to you know some sort of a mixer, uh, and you could really use you know Apollo as you know a plug-in you know server of sorts. You know, running analog. Uh, you could also use the AVAT IO. Um, on an Apollo 16, of course, there's, you know, uh, 16 in, 16 out. You've got all sorts of flexibility there as well. So you've got some really cool uh, functionality there. And you can see the way it, it sort of works. I've got this router here, this output router. Now, the way it works is we have uh, the ability to route to any eight outputs. So you can see line seven and eight is sort of taken up because I've already routed to it. But I could go, you know, line one and two. And then you can see, okay, now those are taken up. And then at the bottom, it kind of shows you like how many routes you've got left, you know, four mono or two stereo. Now, eight channels of routing for this flexible router, but we've also got some new features on the auxes and on the headphones that sort of allow you to do more than eight. Because uh, some people say, well, I want to do 16, because, you know, there's uh, 16 in and out on, uh, on an Apollo uh, 16, excuse me. So if you look at um, what we've got going on with the auxes, there's a new button um, right over here, it's the pre-post button. Now, auxes on Apollo have always been able to route to any output, that's just sort of what they've always done. But now we have the ability to actually make them pre or post fader. So, you know, historically, the auxes on Apollo have always been post fader. And so if I was sending to an aux like I am here, if, you, if I turn this down, you would see the aux level goes down. Uh, but if you're doing something in a live scenario where you're trying to get you know, sort of an uninterrupted mix like we have for our headphone buses, you can make that bus pre-fader. I can turn that all the way down in the monitors and I'm still feeding the aux bus, which right. in turn could feed any output. Right. So so you've got the ability to do two un uninterrupted aux buses. Uh, and then that leads us to the, the third major feature of flex routing, which is um, the headphone outputs, just like we did on the cues on Apollo 16, can now go out to any output as well. So. You know, you could use this, of course, for a headphone amplifier if you were, you know, wanting to hook up Apollo to a, a headphone amp that was maybe 100 feet away. Uh, and you can do that with a balanced cable run, which is really important for studios. Um, but you can also, again, use these headphone buses as more flexible routing. So if you weren't connecting these to headphone outs and you just wanted to get more outputs, you know, you could take the headphone bus, 
turn this up and then route the headphone bus to something like one of the other line outputs or the eight out or the spit if and then you'd again have another uninterrupted output bus that you could route any of these inputs to um, so the other really cool thing about you know the headphones and the oxes on apollo um, is they also allow you to sum channels together if you wanted to send multiple channels whereas you know the router on the input just lets you do sort of a one-to-one -one routing which is what you know customers ask for um, and then sort of uh you know encapsulating the whole thing uh you know virtual io is a feature that we again i mentioned uh, shipped in version seven uh what that allows you to do is take something from your DAW, and let's say we route it to a uh, virtual one and two here and let's say i've got that going you're now going to see that audio is actually playing uh from my uh expand uh synthesizer right into the console i could of course route that through plugins and do you know whatever i want to do let's make this appropriate and put a a fancy new plugin on there. So I could adjust all that stuff. I can go ahead and send that virtual instrument to an aux or to a headphone. Uh, but I can also now just route that directly out. So maybe I'll hook that directly up to an amplifier on stage or maybe some sort of a monitoring system for myself uh, while I'm performing live. Correct. Uh, so the ability to do all of this flexible routing uh, is really what's new in version 7.1. Um, you know, our initial, you know, beta feedback has been very positive and uh, we think customers are going to be really excited to be able to use their Apollo in new ways that they really have never been able to before. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, I suppose uh, you can guess what my final question is, is I've got you on the line today and I've got you as a captive audience. Uh, the big question on everybody's uh, minds for, for Pro Tools users, I'm, I, I'm guessing you're sitting in Pro Tools 10 here, show me this. Uh, how, what's the news on AX? Good question. So uh, thank you for the uh, article. I actually ended up making my own Pro Tools 11 icon um, inspired by you. Um, Which article was that, sorry? Uh, I don't know. I saw some little link on uh, one of your blog articles. It was about how to make your own Pro Tools 11 icon. I think you guys used the 64. Yeah, we uh, did. Yeah. Have you got your own, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, I made my own. But again, it was totally inspired by Pro Tools experts. So thanks. <laughs> we have it running. It's, you know, it's a big job to port, uh, you know, over 55 titles. But uh, we are committed to getting it out this year. Um, you know, probably won't be, you know, next month or something. I know customers are antsy for it. Uh, in fact, we did a little teaser for 7.1 this morning, and 20% of the uh, of the responses to 7.1 uh, is like AAX, AAX. So we know it's, you know, really the most important thing uh, that we can be working on for the Pro Tools base. And again, it's absolutely coming. Um, customers will, will be, you know, excited to hear as I actually, um, you know, I mentioned to you guys, and you guys were nice enough to reblog a few months back. Faster than real-time bounce is absolutely working with UAD products as faster than real-time bounce already works with UAD on other DAWs. Um, and it's just fantastic to be able to use something like our new Ocean Wave plugin, you know, bring up a snare drum, process it, uh, but then also just quickly render that down yeah. so that I can use other instances of it uh, on other tracks and other parts of my session. So um, it's really cool. It's coming, I promise. Um, and again, we'll be you know, updating the customer base as soon as we have a better idea about when it'll be shipping. That's great. Now, a couple of things. You've just mentioned Ocean Way. We reviewed Ocean Way. What a fantastic plugin. We've almost not spoken about that because we haven't seen you since uh, or spoken to you since that last set of releases. But three set, three new plugins with seven, of course, which were Ocean Way and another SPL plugin, I think, wasn't it? Uh, and, uh, and, a, and an equalizer. So uh, you're becoming prolific. And I understand that we've got a, 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 an AMS coming soon as well. We do. So you just mentioned uh, 7.0. We ship the Ocean Way uh, uh, plugin. We've also had the the Sonox Inflator, uh, and then the SPL um, Twin Tube. So yeah, that was a, a huge release for us as well. Uh, of course, now these new plugins in version 7.1. So yes, we're trying to uh, continue to add more plugins to the platform. Um, you know, really for for both you know workflows. Obviously, there's the tracking workflow, also the uh, you know the, the in the DAW workflow for editing, mixing, and mastering. Um, so yeah, we're definitely you know working on trying to get you know all of these new titles uh, for customers for these different types of things, um, but definitely we've been we've been trying to go at a, sort of a feverish pace, as it were, uh, to try and get these things out. That's brilliant. Really appreciate you coming back on the sh on, on the show today, and uh, uh, thanks for your time. And we look forward to speaking to you again soon. Likewise, thank you very much. Take care.